joining me today is Jin Yu Fry. She will be facing Sohi Ham in December uh, for the Animate title at Road FC 45. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm great. Uh, it's, it's Thanksgiving today um, here in America, so everybody's like pigging out. Um, so I haven't really gotten to partake in that part. Uh, but, you know, being around friends and family um, has been great. Um, this is your second camp before, like in December, right? So this is not your first time having Thanksgiving, but not having Thanksgiving at the same time, right? Yeah, the, uh, I did it a couple of years ago, and um, I don't think I was like mentally prepared for it. I was, it, was, it was a struggle. Um, it was really rough. But um, this time I kind of knew what to expect. And, you know, just being able to look at the bigger picture and know that, you know, I'm doing this for a reason and, you know, making weight for a title fight. Um, and Korea is much more important than eating a little bit of pie and, you know, mac and cheese right now. <laughs> um, before your last camp, I saw that you went out to Iceland and you were training with some heavy hitters out there. Now for this camp, what has your training regimen been like? Where have you visited? Who have you trained with? Stuff like that. Um, so for that camp, it like just the timing of it was really weird. And like all of my normal training partners had just gotten like had just fought. And two of them had pretty serious injuries to where like they just couldn't come back to the gym. And so um, that was one of the main reasons why I decided to go out to Iceland. Um, and, you know, I had talked to the head coach out there and he's like, you know, Joanne Calderwood's going to be here. She's doing some of her camp. So I just felt like it was a really good um, place for me to do my camp at the time. Like this time, um, every, everybody's like, you know, healthy and everybody has fights coming up. So, um, you know, I have a lot of people that I'm training with, um, Shauna Dobson and Montana Stewart. They're both, um, going to be fighting for the, or on the, the ultimate fighter finale. So they're part of the inaugural 125 pound division. Mm -hmm. Um, so they both have fights coming up, um, and they're really good training partners. And then we actually periodically go up to Oklahoma, which is only about three hours from us. And um, one of Bellator's top fighters, um, she's a flyweight as well, Emily Dakota, she's up there. So I actually have like a pretty good squad here um, so that I don't really feel like I have to like leave and, you know, go somewhere else to get good training partners for this one. How important is it to have other female fighters training with you? Because you know, a lot of the female fighters, they're on teams where they're the only female. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say that you don't get good training because I, you know, you can get great training, but um, you know, the thing about that is when you're like sparring with the guys or you're rolling with the guys, I feel like they only give you what they think you can handle. Mm. Whereas like when we're in there with the girl, like my rounds with the girls, I feel like are so much harder because we're going like, we're going after each other. <laughs> you know, it's not like the guy like, Oh, I'll just take it easy on her. Cause I'm too big, too strong for her. And just kind of let her work. Like these girls are going after me. So I feel like you know, just having that feeling um, and that pressure and uh, that intensity in your training is important. Now, this matchup, you know, is for the world title. You're, you have a big mountain to climb. How are you preparing for this? Um, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm preparing like any different from any other fight because I, I never like overlook people. And every fight is important to me. I'm not like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do as soon as I you know, finish beating this person. Like every person is a challenge. Every person brings, you know, a different skill set and athleticism um, to a fight and anything can happen in a fight. Um, so like I said, I don't overlook anybody, but I know that she is very talented. Um, it's funny because I used to watch her like, you know, when I was an amateur and when I was starting out um, as a pro, I, I like her fighting style. She's very exciting. Um, I'm excited to fight her because it's kind of cool to um, be in the position where like, like I started from the bottom and she was kind of somebody that I looked up to or that I was watching at the time. And I've worked my way up to where, you know, now we're standing across from each other. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really exciting for me to see how far I've come. And I love challenges. Um, you know, whenever I'm not training, I'm actually, uh, I travel quite a bit and I actually climb mountains. So it's funny that you referred to her as a, <laughs> you know, a huge mountain for me to climb because I love climbing mountains. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited for the bike. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, not just in Korea, but in Asia, they're really anticipating this matchup because they think this is like a real one versus two, you know, fight. 
usually it doesn't happen that way because certain fighters are at different promotions. So how did this come together? Because you're an Invicta FC fighter and, you know, Road FC is a totally different promotion. How did that work out? Uh, in the past, um, Road had actually reached out to me on social media and said that they were interested in um, bringing me in. Like, I'm not really sure how they, you know, came across my name or whatever, or if it's just the fact that um, I am half Korean. Um, but they had expressed interest in me. And at the time, um, I was like, uh, I was in contract with Invicta, but they weren't like using me as often as I like wanted to stay active. So, um, you know, we talked with the management at Invicta and they were okay with letting me fight outside the promotion. Um, and so actually I was going to be matched up in March earlier this year. And then at the last minute Invicta was like, Hey, you know what? We found you a matchup. We're going to put you on one of our cards. You know, we want you to fight on our card instead. Mm -hmm. So I ended up taking that fight and, um, unfortunately my opponent for that card missed weight and the fight got scratched. So it didn't even happen anyway. Um, but after I won this last fight, you know, they told me, they're like, well, you know, the other, the person they had in mind for me to fight came up pregnant. And then, you know, everybody else is kind of on a losing streak. They're like, it's going to take us a while to build up a contender for you. You know, you may be on the shelf for a little bit. And I'm like, that's not really what I'm looking to do. I'm trying to stay active. And so, you know, since Road had reached out to me previously, um, I asked him, I was like, would you mind if we made contact with them again to see if they would like to use me for a card and they were like sure that's fine and so my husband you know had reached out to the matchmaker and immediately they were like hey do you want to fight um Sao-hi? and I was like absolutely so um I'm you know it just all came together really well is this the first time you're going to be entering South Korea I I've gone as a very young child so I don't really remember any of it um so this will be my first time as an adult um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Now, what do you plan on doing? I know, of course, you, you plan on winning the title, but, it, you know, it's Christmas in Korea. Are you going to fly right back after the fights or are you going to stay? What are your well, plans? Well, uh, originally we wanted to stay um, a couple of days, but I think, um, you know, we were like, well, it's going to be Christmas Eve and Christmas. Like, chances are the majority of things are going to be closed for the holidays. And so I'm like, I don't want to stay there. And then we're just like sitting in the hotel for those two days, like not doing. No, anything. actually, everything's open. Really? Yes. I, it's pretty crazy. I, I may have to contact them about my airfare, like really quick, and be like, "Hey, I changed my mind," because I told them originally, you know, to go ahead and just fly me back. Um, but you know, hearing that, maybe I'll have to stay a couple of days. Um, so yeah, you just yeah. made my day. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll stay Changes everything. Days. Huh? Yeah, um, but then it's, it's like really super cold there. I mean, it gets pretty cold, cold here, but I've heard that Korea gets like cold, cold. So it's it's pretty cold right now. So yeah, I, I well, I've been checking it on my phone, like checking the temperature, and I'm like, that's that's pretty cold. Um, that's like about the coldest that it ever gets in Texas. So I was like, mm, that's pretty looks pretty cold there. <laughs> um, now, you know, Korea has been in the news with you know north korea and all this stuff when you told people i'm gonna go to korea to fight what was their reaction because you know the news can manipulate people's viewpoints right yeah like everybody's just like are you sure you sure you want to go there right now and i'm like well if donald trump's pissing <laughs> off north korea it, like you would think the united states isn't a safe place to be i'm like i'll be fine in korea so yeah, everybody kind of has this like misconstrued idea that it, it's going to be so dangerous. And I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, the Donald was just, he was just recently here. So I think it's pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, if they didn't try to take him out while he was there, it, it'll be fine. <laughs> For sure. Um, now, I heard that you have a hidden talent, which is, I don't know if it's hidden, but I heard that you're like a, a legend at ping pong. Is that like your Asian <laughs> side or... You know, like I heard you're a natural. I, I'm actually really good at ping pong. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't want to stereotype myself. I don't know if it's because I'm Asian or if, um, you know, I just naturally have an ability for it. But um, I've been known to play quite a bit of ping pong. Um, one more last question before I let you go. I heard, uh, recently you just, you did your first, I, I think your first commentating job for XKO. How was yes. that experience? 
it was so much harder than what I thought it would be. I was like, oh, it's just fighting. I, I mean, I could talk about fighting all night, but it's like, it's hard not to get stuck just watching the fights. Like I would, I would be watching them. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be talking right now. And then it's hard to keep up with the action. Like, um, cause they were like, well, we want you to talk about the positions and give us just a little bit more technical knowledge to the viewers about what's happening. And so I'm like trying to describe what's happening, but then, you know, the action's so fast that I'm like, oh, I, I just, I couldn't keep up, but, uh, it, it was, it was fun. But like I said, it, it was much harder than what I thought it would be. All right. Thank you for your time and, uh, good luck. And I guess I will see you when you get to Korea. All right. I look forward to it. Thank you.